Hi, I'm Paul Friedman, founder of the Marriage Foundation, and people write in to us. It's a free service, and you can too. Just go to the Marriage Foundation and uh, click on Ask a Counselor, and we'll help you. And someone wrote in that my husband is no longer the man I married. And they had a few other things to say. <laughs> it was, that wasn't a standalone, but um, this is the main topic. And I want to address this in a couple of different ways. Um, we go into marriage, generally, without having the correct expectations. You know, the correct expectation should be really only a two-parter. One, that you're going to be happier every day of your life. Marriage is designed to create so much happiness that you almost can't take it. And the other part is unconditional love. You learn to love unconditionally, to experience marital love. So those are the expectations that you should have when you get married. And unfortunately, we don't nail those down in our minds. It's subconscious. We wouldn't marry someone unless we loved them and had an expectation that we're going to love them till the end of life and hopefully more and more. And there's also the expectation, unspoken, that we'll be happy in our marriage. Who gets married to not be happy, to be miserable? The trouble is that we don't learn about marriage growing up. Our society, it's no one's fault. People don't know. The Marriage Foundation is cutting edge. The teachings that I'm bringing into the world now, they're not going to be really widespread till well after I'm gone. Because marriage is based in love, and love is deeply spiritual. It means that we're connecting our souls as soulmates, that we are essentially souls, and we're meeting with another soul on the highest plane of our individual existence. You know, we, we live simultaneously on three planes because we have a body. The body is biological, very self-interested. It's only interested in self-preservation. And so the body constantly wants you to take care of you, and that's it. And that's what it's telling the mind to do. And over the course of, I'm going to say it, incarnations, we gradually learn that we do better, feel better, get along better by sharing with each other, by caring for one another, by being of service. And so our morality increases, we develop a moral compass, and we start living a better life, but only a little piece at a time, until we're ready. And then when we're ready, we realize there's got to be more. And God has provided more for us in the form of marriage. It is the highest spiritual path. Because when you achieve what you're supposed to achieve in marriage, you're achieving communion with God. Because God is love. God is wisdom. God is joy. And so that's what we are all seeking without knowing it. And we have this opportunity to seek it and achieve it in this one lifetime, but we don't know. We've never learned it. And so our expectations are wrong. So when you married a man who changes, or maybe had hidden things, welcome to the world. People are not clean in this world. Now, unless he's dangerous, just chalk it up to you're not doing enough work to recognize what his attributes were before you married him or that he hid them so well. But unless it's dangerous, accept the limitations of all of us, that we all have attributes that we're working on. And put your attention instead on learning how to love him, learning how to appreciate him for who he is. He can't be all bad or you wouldn't have married him. You know, when I used to, it's over 20 years ago that I shifted from being a divorce mediator 
to a marriage helper. But I never got rid of my whiteboard. So when I met with people, and in the beginning I only met with couples, which was a mistake, then I started meeting with individuals after meeting with them the first time. And now we have courses, of course, at the Marriage Foundation, individually oriented. So there's a men's course and a women's course. But I would meet with people and they would start, because this is what we're taught, they would start describing the flaws of their husband or wife. And I had my whiteboard and I took out my trusty dry erase marker, my big black one. It was a big whiteboard covered the wall and I put seven dots on the whiteboard and then I would ask what do you see and everyone said the same thing I see seven black dots and I said so you don't see all the white all you see are the black dots and they got it we live in a dangerous world, so we've trained, our mind is trained to look for danger, to look for problems, to not look at the white, all the good. I said, these dots represent the flaws. The white represents who you married, the soul. Where do you want to put your energy? Where do you want to put your attention? What do you want to do? You can have a happy marriage and you can have it even without your spouse, even without your husband joining in. We have a course for women. You could transform not just your marriage, but your lives. So <laughs> I'm not going to be rough with you. I'm not going to say, don't tell me about how he's different. I'm not going to do that to you. You just saw part of my, uh, I grew up as, Jewish. And of course, that's how Jews express it. Hey, don't tell me. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you because I believe you. I know it's true. I've met with hundreds of people and we've saved thousands of marriages. So I know what's going on. I'm saying shift your energy, shift your focus, shift your attention, make your marriage amazing. You have the power. Put your energy into that. And I know there's a bunch of what ifs out there. There always are. 95% of the time, 99% of the time, those what ifs is just your mind trying to get you to not be in touch with your heart. Because your heart is where it's at. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. I'm Paul Friedman. Join me again. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. Leave a comment. Take care.